state funeral for Queen Elizabeth II marks an end of an era. London Monday marked the end of the second Elizabethan age, after ten days of very public official mourning was caped by a majestic farewell for Britain's longest serving monarch. The coffin bearing Queen Elizabeth II's body was slower into the royal vault. Monday, after a ceremony at St. George Chapel in Windsor Castle. The elaborate occasion was witnessed by millions of her subjects and by billions more people watching broadcast around the world. Elizabeth's son, King Charles III, and other members of the royal family are expected to witness the actual burial in the King George VI Memorial Chapel, which is a small alcove on the side of the main building. The Queen will eventually be joined there by her husband, Prince Philip. After his body is moved from the royal vault, where he was interred after he died last year, Buckingham Palace said it would not release any other details about the deeply personal family occasion. Unlike the public funeral at Westminster's Abbey earlier in the day, which was attended by the world leaders and other, the final service for Elizabeth in the chapel was a more private end to the grand chain of carefully choreographed ceremony. That began after she died, September eight, at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. There's the Queen. A boy cried out as the crowd on the long walk watched the flower-strewn state tears carrying Elizabeth's coffin inch its way uphill toward Winston Castle, accompanied by the booms of cannon fire. This was what many had camped for hours to see. And suddenly, a forest of camera phones was being held aflop to capture a moment in history that many thought unimaginable during Elizabeth's seventy years' reign. Earlier, tens of thousands lined the Mall in London to watch the procession that followed the funeral, their farewell for the monarch whose seventy years' reign began in the aftermath of World War Two, outlasted the Cold War. And spanned the dawn of the space race to ubiquity of the internet, also cemented the rules of its new one. Elizabeth Coffin was carried on a Royal Navy gun carriage on the funeral service to the Wellington Arch near Hyde Park. It was then transferred to a state hearse for the journey to Windsor. Before the funeral service, Westminster Abbey ten years bell tolled ninety six times. Once for every year of Elizabeth's life, before her coffin was carried inside for the state funeral, behind the castle follow her eldest son Charles, who's at age seventy-three, is finally taking the reign of the kingdom. Then, for the next hour, there were tributes to Elizabeth and hymns that culminated in two minutes of silence observed by those in attendance and across the country. In his sermon, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, recalled that when Elizabeth turned twenty-one, she vowed in a radio address to her millions of subjects around the world to spend her life serving the British nation and the Commonwealth. Rarely has such a promise been so well kept, he said. Toward the end of the ceremony at Westminster Abbey, mourners gather in the ancient edifice, sang "God Save the King." A version of the national anthem that had not been heard there in seventy years. The service took place after the epic line of devoted mourners, who had spent four days filling past her coffin, was halted, and more than a week of ceremonies steeped in ancient tradition came to a close. That's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.